Hi, my name is Matthew Peterson. I'm a trainer here at Pragmatic Works located up in Northeast Florida. And I do a lot of work with Power BI and Power Apps training. And one of the issues that often comes up in our Power Apps training is, I love the fact that we can see records in our application, but is there a way to filter that down? Uh, and not only is there a way, there's a lot of different ways. So in this week's video, I wanna go over some of the most common ways of how to filter down a, a gallery of records. Uh, and then hopefully in some future videos, I'm gonna get into some of the more advanced techniques and tricks. So let's head on over and take a look at the app that I'm working with. This app, as you see here, just has some basic information. Uh, I have the, a person's name along with the, what their favorite color is, if they are a cat or a dog person. And all of this data is being driven from a SharePoint list. So on the SharePoint list, there's a few extra columns in here that I have not put in the actual app itself, but that's okay. Because when it comes time to filtering, not only can you filter on the record that you see, like the data, the columns that you're returning, but you can filter it on any column that is driving that data source. So for example, I do not have the favorite number in their gallery currently. However, I'm still gonna be able to filter on their favorite number if I wanted to. So let's start off with the most basic way to filter down a gallery. What you would do is you would come over and you would select your gallery. And the current setting is items is equal to my data source, which I've called the SharePoint list patch records, which is meaning it's gonna show me all of my records all at once. So if I go over here and hit play, I scroll down, I see every single record that is in there. Now let's say that I want it to be filtered down. So I'm gonna go over to gallery and I want these items, these records to be filtered. So we're going to use the filter command. So right up here, we're gonna go right in front of patch records and I'm going to type in filter. And if it lets me type, here we go, there we go. And so we're gonna go, let's filter this out. And so filter says, all right, the first thing you need to do is give me a source that you want filtered. Done, that is what I want filtered, my patch records SharePoint list. And then we're gonna to go to the comment, it says now provide a logical test. So what we have to do here is we have to state what column we want in our gallery to be filtered down by. So for example, let's say that I wanted it filtered down by their favorite color. So I would come in here and I would start with that column name of favorite color. And so let's come on down here. There's my favorite color column. And let's say I want it to only show when the favorite color is equal to red. So because red is text, um, red is a color, but it's stored as text in our SharePoint list here, I'm gonna wrap it in double quotes. So red. So I have favorite filter patch records, favorite colors equal to red. We'll close this off. And now when we come back out, and I'm just gonna go right in here into playing it, all of these are showing me in terms of my favorite colors of red. And so that's a really simple thing to do. And we could have done this on, on any column. However, sometimes you will get a little bit of extra coding that you have to do, so to speak. So the favorite color here is just a free text column in my SharePoint list. Put in your favorite color, go for it. However, I do have a column in my SharePoint list called cat or dog, which is a choice column. And if I try to do the cat or dog, which is a choice column in here, we're gonna get something that does not work. So what you might think, or what I thought initially when I was learning Power Apps is I would just come on over, put in that column, which is cat or dog, and then I would say equals cat, and then close it off, and then hit play, and I'm not getting anything. Well, I'm getting something, but it's not the correct results whatsoever. And I'm, I'm throwing an error out here as well. And it says, this is an invalid argument type. And here's the reason why. Because cat or dog is a choice column, that means there's actual, there's, there's a limit of values that are actually stored in that column. It's not just free response. So whenever you have a choice column in SharePoint, what you have to do is after you say the column name, you're gonna go dot. And then you're gonna say return the actual value that is assigned in this column for each record. So we're gonna say dot value. Now we can say is equal to, now we can put in the value that we think that we want. So whether we wanna see cats or dogs. So let's, uh, I'm feeling like dog person today. So I'll put in double quotes, dog, and we'll close out those parentheses. And if all is right in the world, we should see, yes, just dogs only. Also a side note, it is not case sensitive in terms of the text itself. So if I come over here and just do a lowercase d and hit enter, notice I'm still going to get my dogs. 
Uh, so that is just putting a basic filter right on the gallery itself. However, this is basically hard coded in, right? What if you want your end users to be able to see lots of records and then as they're viewing the records, they want to put in their own filters. Is there a way to have usability control for them to pick out the filter they want? And there definitely is. So to get this started, we don't want um, anything filtered currently. So I'm just going to set this right back to patch records. So we're going to see all of our records. Now, in order for our end user to have that ability to filter down their own gallery, we got to put some kind of control in here, some kind of object that they can interact with. And so what I'm going to do for this example is in the insert ribbon under input, I'm going to put in here a drop down. And so what the drop down is going to do is it's going to allow me to put items into that drop down itself. Now, the items that we're going to put in have to come from our data source. Not necessarily. You can also hard code your items in, which again, I'm going to try to do in another video down the road. But for right now, I'm just going to go with, you know what? I want to access the data that's in that patch uh, records data source. So oop, there we go over here. So we're going to type on in patch records. And if I could spell right this morning, there we go. So patch records. And when I put that over here, if you take a look in your properties pane, and I'll get out of the way. If you take a look over at the properties pane, it gives you a whole bunch of different columns that are in here, all values that you can use. So for example, I could come in here and put down a uh, favorite number, for example. So again, remember I said it didn't have to be based on a column that you actually see in your gallery. So I'm going to put down favorite number. And when I hit play, notice in this drop down list, I have all the ones that have favorite numbers. You might be going, Matt, why are there some blanks? Well, these are for people who uh, did not put in a favorite number. And why do I see two 26s? Well, two different people put in 26 itself. And you might be going, Matt, I don't like that. I don't like that there's duplicates of it. Again, that's going to be for a future video. So let's say instead of doing it based on number, I wanted it to do it on the, uh, the person in the title column. So if I come on down, and the title column is where I'm storing everybody's name. So now when I come over here to play, we have all these people. Now when I select these, nothing is going to happen. However, what I can now do is I can now assign the filter through the gallery to reference that drop down list. So we're going to kind of do the same thing, except when we go to the gallery, we are going to put in our filter command again. And let me zoom in. And we're going to say, hey, let's filter down our patch records list. And it's going to say, okay, give me a source. And then my source is patch records, which is perfect. Now what is the test? So again, I want to reference what values are going to be in my drop down. And these values all relate to my title column of my gallery. So I'm going to say I want the title to equal, I'll zoom back out now, and I want it to equal the text that is in my drop down. And look, it's already figuring this out for me. This is it, drop down one dot selected dot title. And if I close this off in just a second and we hit play here, there we go. We're only seeing Molly now. Let's go look for David. Now we only see David. Jim, now we only see Jim. So that is a, a really quick way of how to put a filter drop down based off of a column within your, your list. Now again, there's a little bit of a caveat here. When I made this first drop down and I came over to pick a value, a column, I had almost all of my columns were, were here except there is one that is, uh, that is missing. I'm missing the cat or dog. And the reason the cat or dog is not showing up here is because, again, we're going back, it's a choice column. So it's not just your free response text column or free response number column that you can put in. So we have to do something a little bit different if we want to use the cat or the dog column. So let's take a look at how we're going to get that done. So over here, back on my drop down, I'm going to change this uh, patch records. And instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I want the items uh, for this, I'm going to use a separate function. And the function that I'm going to use is the distinct function. So we're going to say distinct patch records. And this is going to return the distinct amount of values that are within a specific column. So I'm going to say, what column do I want to reference? I want to reference the cat or dog. 
because this wasn't a free response one. So I want all the actual allowed values for the cat or the dog column. And so I come over here, it's going, wait, 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 this doesn't, this doesn't look right. Look what you're returning. You're returning a table because that cat or dog is a choice column. So what do we have to put after those choice columns? We have to put in that dot value again. We actually want to see the values that are in there. And so now when I click on play, okay, things are looking good. We have cat, we have dog. So we have the actual values for that column because it wasn't able to just find them on their own because of the way that the data is being stored in SharePoint. Now comes the last trick. We want to use this to filter down our gallery. So I'm gonna come back over to gallery. We're gonna still do a filter. We're still gonna do it on patch records. However, the column in question now is our cat or dog column. So we're gonna come on down to cat or dog and it's already throwing that red line in. If we start thinking about it right now, we have to go, wait, cat or dog is a special column, so we can't just give it the column name. We have to go with dot, and we have to go with value. So we want the cat or dog value in the gallery to equal the same one from our dropdown. So we're gonna say dropdown one, all right? And it says, wait, this is just a control. What do you want out of that control? What do you want me to access? So we're gonna hit the dot again. I want you to pull out the selected text, what we actually selected here. All right, and then they're going, wait, that's still a record. We remember we need just one value in a column. We don't need a whole record. So usually whenever you get those reds at the end of a formula, or you're like, I'm not sure where to go next, always just hit the period or the dot. That oftentimes will help troubleshoot because Power Apps is gonna try to give you an idea of what to do. So let's do dot. Oh, well, here we go. Here's our value again. So dot value. And then let's see if we are in business. So dog, look, yes, I'm showing all dogs. Cats, yes, I'm showing all cats now. So in this video, we've talked about a few different ways. You can just put a basic hard-coded filter in uh, based on the gallery itself without a dropdown. Remember, if it's a choice column, you gotta put that dot value in. And you can also put in your own dropdowns within an app and reference the dropdown uh, to do your filterings as well. Now this is some of the more basic filtering. Uh, like I said, in the next uh, week or so, when I get some time, I hope to make one on the more advanced filtering where we have two dropdowns, where we can also filter based on who the user is who's currently logged in. And that's gonna throw something out there called delegation warnings. So if you've ever been interested in learning about that, stay tuned, uh, and I can't wait to give you some more videos.